Hi, I'm Alex Bornicelli, and today, together, we are going to make my sweet and sour chicken. And this is just one of those classic mouth-watering dishes. We're always looking for new ways to cook chicken. What can we do with it? Can we dress it up? Can we change it up? Because we never get tired of eating it. So we've got to find new ways to cook it. The chicken aisle in the supermarket, because it kind of has its own aisle, can be really confusing to navigate. I thought we could start with a whole chicken. Break it down together, talk about the parts, and talk about what to look for when you're at the store and buying a chicken. This is probably a three to a three and a half pound whole bird. If your budget permits, definitely get the organic chicken or the, at least the antibiotic, hormone-free, free-range chickens. They have the most taste. They're the healthiest for you. That's what we like. Now, a chicken has a couple different geographic regions and they're different, right? We have the dark meat and the light meat. They cook at different rates. And the thigh meat definitely has more fat running through it. It's a little bit juicier, a little bit tastier, but the white meat has its own delicate way too, right? I like to put on gloves when I'm cutting up chicken. You can just wash your hands to get really ready. Think of yourself as the surgeon of your delicious dinner. So here we have the whole chicken. We're gonna start by cutting off the thigh meat. These are the thighs and the drumsticks. So you're gonna make a little cut here, right where the drumstick is. Just cut down into it. That's your first cut. This is exciting. Don't be daunted by this. So you've made your first cut and you, see, you can see that thigh is kind of relaxing, right? You wanna pull the skin over the breast meat so it's covered and cut again on the other side in the same place. You're just detaching the thighs from the chicken. Can you see that, how they're lying down now? Now turn the chicken and you wanna just complete that thought by cutting around. You can see, right? You can see that chicken thigh already. Pull it back. See that, the end of the thigh bone right there sticking out? Just use that. And there you have your first thigh beautifully covered with skin, which we like. And you can see how when you cut that first thigh away, there's a little breast meat that's exposed that doesn't have the skin on it anymore. So pull the skin over and stretch it over that breast meat, right? Now you cut on the same place to get the other thigh off. See that thigh bone? That's the classic indicator. That's kind of the dotted lines. I think chicken comes with dotted lines. You just have to find them. And there you have your second thigh. Now what you're left with is the wings and the breast meat. For the wing tips, Make a cut, you have, the wing has three parts, one, two, three. In the middle of the third bone here, cut just to get that skin and pop it back. And you'll see that. And I have my little wing tip. Again, on the other side, same thing. Part one, part two, part three. In the middle of part three, just cut around it to get into that bone and that skin. And pull that little piece back. All right, so the second wing tip is removed and now we have two breasts left with that little wishbone. Just cut right down the middle. Do not be daunted by this. Just take it nice and slow. Now you have the wishbone in here at the end, so you're gonna hit that eventually but just cut down the middle. Notice how I'm using one hand to pull the meat away from the bone as I'm cutting. Right, let that knife just hug that, that bone. And you can, you can see the breast starting to pull away, but it's attached here, right? By that last little bit, that little wing bone.
See that? That's that critical place. Cut in between. You want the maximum amount of skin on the leanest part of the meat because the skin gives that fat and that richness where it's needed most, right? The thighs, they've got that built-in intramuscular fat. They're gonna be juicy no matter what. In fact, I wanna rip the skin off the thigh and give it back to the breast meat, but we'll leave it as is for now. Cut on the other side. Again, just hugging that bone with your knife. So you wanna cut down, you detach that second breast. Again, a little less skin on there. You see I did a better job on one than the other. I'm an iron chef, but I'm not afraid to admit the truth. And then you have your carcass, which is fantastic for stocks. You can roast it and make a roasted chicken stock, or you can just simmer this in water with a pinch of salt, makes a beautiful stock. So now you have all your chicken parts. For this recipe, we're gonna cut these a little bit more just to make the pieces a little smaller and more even. So go ahead and cut around the drumstick till you find that hinge, right? One drumstick, one thigh. And this is again, all the dark meat together, the two wing tips. You wanna do the same on the other side. Just gently cut down. Don't be afraid if you have to bumble around a little bit and find where to cut. I've cut a million chickens and I still kinda fumble around a little bit. Two thighs, your two drumsticks and your two little wing tips. And we're left with that beautiful breast meat. Just cut the breasts in half. Cut them a little bit on an angle. Right? Again, on an angle. And it's really just for beauty. So that the pieces are all in inviting shape. And you see that by cutting it on an angle, you're actually making the breast meat mimic the shape of the thigh meat. So it all looks seamlessly the same. There's your chicken. Now for this sweet and sour chicken, I like to cut up a whole chicken. Buy two packs of chicken parts and just use that. Make all drumsticks and thighs, make all breast meat. You can mix and match the meat the way you want. Here's the really important part. When you are finished and you are ready to start cooking your chicken, clean down everything else. I'm gonna take off my gloves inside out so that my hands never really touched it. You're gonna get rid of the whole board, the knife and the gloves, and you have another board conveniently waiting in the wings underneath it. And I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay, so now you're ready to really start cooking. The first thing you wanna do is preheat your oven to 375 degrees so that it's getting nice and hot while we're getting ready to cook the chicken. We're gonna start browning the chicken over a medium heat. I've got a nice big saute pan, medium heat. I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of canola oil. I don't wanna use olive oil for browning the chicken. It's expensive. It also has a lower smoke point, which means it's gonna burn more easily while I'm browning the chicken. And I don't want the taste of the olive oil in there. We're always talking about what oil to use where. Here, you don't want to taste olive and bitterness from the olive oil. You just want a nice neutral oil. We want this to taste like chicken, not olives. Important, seasoning your chicken. When you are seasoning any meat, you want to season it on both sides. I'm going to season with kosher salt. Notice the oil's heating and we're just going to start salting. Why do chefs do this, right? Why are we always up here? Because we want to look cool. It's actually because you want to sprinkle and you want that salt to fall evenly over your food. So if it's high up, you can watch it sprinkle and where it hits the protein, right? You're visually engaged and involved with what you're doing. So salt on the first side of all these pieces, nice and high. Notice I'm sprinkling like this. You don't want to drop it all in one place. You want the salt to go all over. So do that little hand motion. 
you're going to feel like a chef. White pepper, just a sprinkle on everything. I like the white pepper because you can't see it. It's like that underground flavor, right? If you don't have white pepper, feel free to sub in black pepper. If you don't have black pepper, put red pepper flakes. If you don't have all three, um, don't put pepper. Okay, I've done the first side seasoned. Now I'm gonna turn these pieces over. We seasoned the skin side, and now we're gonna season the meat side of all these pieces. Again, the two thighs, the two wing tips, the two drumsticks, and the four pieces of breast meat. Repeat the same. High up, move those fingertips. You're getting exercise. You're burning calories while you're salting. Don't be afraid to season both sides. Chicken is 98% water. It needs that flavor and that seasoning. Again with the pepper. And now you should really feel comfortable that your meat is seasoned on all sides. It's really ready for you to start cooking an incredible dish. I've got the oil, two tablespoons of canola oil in a big pan. Notice that it's starting to fan out the oil and thin out in the pan as starting to smoke lightly. You want to wait for those indicators that the oil gives you over medium heat to start dropping your chicken. This way, it won't stick. How many times have you browned something and had it stick? See how it's a little brown inside? Just drop all these pieces. Skin side down, you want to put these, right? You want to start by browning that skin. That creates flavor. Actually making me hungry. Are you hungry? You want to brown the skin. Now listen, we are searing chicken. You've probably heard a chef or two say, searing meat locks in the juices. It doesn't. This is purely about creating and developing great flavor by browning your meat. That's actually all we're doing. And that's all we ever really want to do, is create great taste. You definitely want to brown these as spaced apart as you can. It's nice if there's a little bit of room in between each to help the browning. Okay. While the chicken is browning, let's get started on the sauce. I kind of love a dish where you're making the chicken and the sauce at the same time. It comes together and you eat. Pearl onions. These are some classic white pearl onions. You could use red pearl onions. There are also ones you've probably seen that look a little bit like little flying saucers. They're called Cipollini onions. You could use any of those or a mix. If you like the different colors and tastes. Peeling the pearl onions. The same as peeling the big onions, just a little bit smaller. You want to start by just cutting that root end off and using it to peel down a little bit and get in there and scrape away the layers. And you notice how you can use the blade of your knife to scrape a little bit. You can use that sharp blade of yours to just help peel away the skin and that's all we're doing. Now I used to have to peel bowls and bowls of these when I was a kid. I think that's where my chef roots really started. You can soak these for 15 or 20 minutes in some warm water and the skins will come off more easily. You can also buy them pre-peeled. But I kind of like the act of peeling them. Notice again, a mixture of cutting and scraping really gets that skin off. And you'll see, right? The chicken's starting to brown. You're getting that waft of a little bit of onion going. You can already smell this dish coming together. And to me, those are the best dishes to cook, right? The ones that immediately start to make you hungry. A lot of people use their hands to try and peel the onion. 
Use that knife to help you scrape. It'll save you a lot of time. Peeling an onion with just your hands and no knife, we'll be here all night. Okay. So in the one pan, you have your chicken browning in a large pan over medium heat in the canola oil. I can see it starting to brown on the edges. When you're cooking, you want to touch things. You want to move them. You want to flip it. Resist all those temptations. Just let this chicken brown. Now in another smaller saute pan, also over medium heat, you're going to start cooking your pearl onions. Here you have a pound of pearl onions and one tablespoon of butter. You're cooking these onions and they're gonna be part of your dish, but it's also the sauce. Just melt the butter. Let the pan get a little hot over medium heat and add those pearl onions. Now, to your pearl onions, just a pinch of salt, and you have them starting to cook and soften up in that butter. The chicken. You can see along the edges that you're getting that skin. That's what you gotta look for, along the edges. And you can even lift a piece up and have a peek. You gotta look, how do you know? You've got a visual cue that your chicken's browning. After about five minutes, turn all the pieces on their second side the brown on the other side. See that nice skin? You can, when you touch it with your tongs, you can feel that it's already crispy. Mmm. I'm ready to eat now. Again, separate the pieces a little bit so there's always space between each one. At this point, honestly, you could finish cooking this chicken on the stove and toss it in any sauce you like. That's already a great way to cook chicken any way you like it. Soy sauce, tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, lights out good. For this particular recipe, we're gonna add some sweet and sour sauce you can see your onions are starting to brown ever so slightly. That's fine. What we're doing here is cooking them stovetop to get them nice and tender in the butter. When they start to brown slightly and become a little translucent after a couple of minutes, you're gonna add half a cup of white wine. Okay, so when your chicken is brown on both sides, and you can tell that, just by looking at it. You see you've got that beautiful golden brown skin that's nice and crispy. And you want it browned on the underside too. You don't just want to brown one side of the chicken. You want to maximize flavor by browning on both sides. Then take an oven proof pan, nice and big. And take all those pieces and arrange them on a tray layered with parchment. Why parchment? Why layer your tray with anything? You know what? This is an aluminum baking sheet. You don't want your food that you're eating directly touching the aluminum tray. You want that layer of parchment protecting it. Good for flavor too. Notice how I am and you want to layer the pieces of chicken again with space between them. When there's space between your food that's browned, it will continue browning especially in the oven, right? Because the air can blow all around and be like a nice country breeze blowing through all your pieces of chicken. If you crowd them all tightly together, it's all, see how much water and liquid comes out of the chicken? They just sit here hanging around and steaming each other instead of getting beautifully golden brown and roasted. So leave that space. Okay, so once you've browned your chicken, it's got salt, pepper, you've browned it on both sides over medium heat in a large saute pan, now we finish roasting it, which gets it all golden brown and finishes the cooking process. So take your tray and pop it in the oven. So you've got your chicken in your preheated 375 degree oven. 
You're gonna cook that for 15 to 18 minutes or until they're cooked through. You can just take a thermometer and stick it in the thickest part of the thigh meat. That's the meat that takes the longest to cook on the chicken. It's the most dense. And you want it to cook it to a temperature of 165 degrees. Then you can pull it out and you know your chicken's cooked through. Now to build that sauce. So you have this beautiful pan here where you brown the chicken. You've got all those little bits of brown chicken and the grease and everything else. That's where we're gonna build more flavor with a little bit of bacon. You don't wanna add a lot. This isn't a bacon with X dish. This is a chicken dish that has some sweet and sour notes, juicy tomatoes, and just a little bit of bacon that offers more than anything saltiness and smokiness to this dish. That's the kind of ingredient that just gets people eating and eating and eating. So you have four strips of pre-sliced bacon, right? I like to stack them. Don't be afraid to stack the four strips. And now you're gonna cut the bacon just into half inch slices. By the way, I got a D in math geometry, so feel free to interpret what a half an inch is. And you're just cutting these strips of bacon into nice, smaller, even pieces before you cook it. It's much easier to cut bacon into the pieces you want before you cook it. You have the pan here where you cook the chicken. You took it out. Your chicken's in the oven. Check your pan. Make sure it's not too burned or dark brown on the bottom. If it is, take a kitchen towel and just wipe out any of those bits that you think are a little bit too dark. You don't wanna add burned flavor, you wanna add browned flavor. So feel free to clean up your pan a little bit and then add your bacon. You have the four strips of bacon cut into half inch pieces, right? And now, normally you would scrape with this side of your knife, but that dulls the blade of your knife. Use the side without the blade and scrape that bacon right off the board into the pan. As you start to cook the bacon and the fat starts to melt out, it's gonna start picking up all those little juicy, crispy bits of chicken fat and brown chicken skin that are left over. That's why if you build your dish in two pans, all the flavor goes into your food and you end up with a lot fewer dishes too. So just brown this bacon nice and easy, spread it out. This is gonna get mixed with the chicken once it's brown. The smell of the chicken roasting in the oven with the brown skin and the bacon on top of the stove. Can you say dinner? The onions have been browning gently. We added the white wine. We added half a cup of white wine. Now to cook them until they're tender, because they take a while to cook, right? You give them a squeeze to see. I'm gonna add a half a cup of water. You're still cooking those onions nice and steadily over medium heat. Now for the sweet and sour part of the sauce that goes with the onions. You've added the water, you've added the white wine. Now you're gonna add two tablespoons of brown sugar. That's the sweet part. Two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. That's the sour part. And then you're gonna add a little secret ingredient that's kind of a bridge between the sweet and the sour of the sugar and the vinegar. That's two tablespoons of golden raisins. Tangy, tart, that underground little bit of flavor. But before you add the raisins to the vinegar and the water and the onions, you're gonna chop them up a little bit. You don't ever really wanna eat a whole raisin like this. The only place you want to see a whole raisin is in a scone when you're at the airport, right? Or a muffin. You don't want that in your sweet and sour chicken. So you're going to cut these up a little bit. Now look at this bacon. The thing I love about bacon is everyone knows how to cook it. It's self-explanatory, right? Cook it until browned and then take it out.
and just drain it on a kitchen towel. So you have your bacon draining on a kitchen towel. Just put that to the side for right now. We're still not done with this pan. After you cook your bacon, again, feel free to wipe any overly brown parts out of your pan with a kitchen towel and drain some of that excess bacon grease. Because while we love bacon grease and we love the taste of bacon, you don't want your dish to be greasy. You can always pour the grease back in if it needs it or use this to scramble some eggs. But you want just a little thin coating of that bacon grease and you've got those beautiful brown chicken notes and the bacon. And that's just kind of waiting in the wings. For the sauce itself, we have the onions and you see they're starting to get a little bit tender now that they've been simmering on the stove. The water, vinegar, white wine and brown sugar is all simmering down to become a glaze. Here you have two tablespoons of golden raisins and you just wanna give them a light chop. Just cut them up a little bit. Pretend that you're just feeding the knife a little bit of the raisins at a time. So if you're a righty like me, take your knife and just get it going. Like you turned on a light or turned on a machine and then use your other hand to just push the raisins in. Keep the tip of your finger curled under as much as you can so that you don't cut them. You can see how these raisins are just getting cut up into smaller bits. Why cut up the raisins? Why go to this extra trouble, you say? By cutting up the raisins into smaller pieces, they're definitely going to melt more into the sauce. They're going to be kind of that underground bit of flavor, almost like you can't identify what that little something is. If you're taking the time to cook at home, every one of your recipes should have just one ingredient where people say, what is that that I taste? Why does your chicken taste different? Why am I here for dinner the fifth night in a row and I don't want to go home? It's things like this, these little chopped up golden raisins. See how much smaller they are? Use the non-blade side, scoop up, and drop them right into that onion and brown sugar mix. Now here you can really see the sauce, the glaze coming together. You see that? The combination of the raisins, the brown sugar, the onions. Oh yeah, it's happening. One pint of cherry tomatoes. It doesn't matter what kind of cherry tomato you use, whatever's good at the market. You like yellow tomatoes, orange tomatoes, just the little cherry tomatoes, and just cut the tomatoes in half. I like to cut two at a time. If you can manage, cut them two at a time. It'll go faster. And for that reason, even though you may want to use a smaller knife to cut cherry tomatoes, right? Small knife, small food. In this case, you can use a larger knife and cut two at a time. The thing about the tomatoes in this dish is they add some sweetness. They kind of link up with the onions and the brown sugar, but they also have a tart side which connects to those golden raisins and that red wine vinegar. Every ingredient in this dish is a push-pull between sweet and sour. Heat that pan where you cook the bacon and the chicken, and now we're using our pan a third time to just brown and melt a little bit all the cherry tomatoes. Notice how you can drop the board right over the pan. Once they're in there, Spread them out a little bit over medium heat. You should get a little bit of smoke from this. Don't be alarmed by that. That's just the water or steam escaping from the tomatoes. Nothing to be afraid of. If your pan gets really brown and 
smoking and it's starting to make you nervous, you're in charge. Don't forget that when you're cooking. Turn the heat off and just finish them without any heat so the pan mellows out. It's like driving a car, cooking. Sometimes you're going 10, sometimes you're going 60. You can see now that the tomatoes are starting to brown a little bit, char ever so slightly. The water's coming out of them. When you cook water out of food, you know what you get? Food with more flavor, right? That's really what we're doing. We're getting the water out of the tomatoes, the water out of the chicken and out of the onions, and we're getting the ingredients in a more intensified version of themselves. Once the tomatoes have browned a little bit and kind of cooked a couple minutes, just shut the heat off. Let them hang out here on the stove. It's a little bit tender, but you still want a little bit of the tomato's natural texture. Uh, a couple of specific foods will let you know right away if your knives aren't sharp enough. One of them is the ever so lovely but very cruel tomato. It's hard to pierce the skin of a tomato to slice it without turning the tomato into mush. If you're cutting something and you see your knife is not sharp enough or it's resisting, stop down for a second and just give your knife a nice sharpen. Steel, knife, on either side. Notice how I'm angling it at about a 45 degree angle to get that blade on either side. So one side, and then come down and go on the other. Notice how my elbow's involved? People think it's all in the wrist. Get your elbow in on there. You're gonna, you're gonna look great at the beach this summer, right? With these nice chef biceps and elbow toning. Just gently run the whole blade of the knife down the whole length of the steel. That's how you know you're really sharpening the whole thing. See that? Do it a few times. And then you know what? I just rubbed metal against metal. Before you use your knife again, give it a little wipe to remove any excess metal that may have gotten loose while you're sharpening. And that way your knife is clean and sharp and you're ready to start cooking again. One note about this recipe. Pearl onions, baby onions, they can vary in size, which means they'll vary in cooking time. That's why you have a range on the recipe from a half to one and a half cups of water. If you add the first half cup of water and it cooks down and the onions still aren't tender to the touch, feel free to add more water in and cook them a little bit longer until the sauce reduces and coats the onions and the onions are tender. How to tell if the onions are cooked? Well. You can take one out of your pan, put it on your board and taste it. Or you can just literally take a small knife and just test to see if the tip of the knife goes in and out of the onion seamlessly. That's how you can feel that they're cooked. See how this one just in and out really nice and you can see that it's tender. That's a good one right there. Let's look at that. In and out, juicy and tender, I can tell. If you have larger onions, you're gonna need a few more minutes cooking time and a little bit more water to have them be completely tender like this one, which I think you should eat. Mm. Hot. And I'm actually glad I did that. You definitely wanna taste the components in your recipe before you put them together because anything is as good as the sum of its parts. For the onions, when they start to get tender and the sauce reduces, season them with an extra pinch of salt and another few turns of the pepper mill. White pepper or black pepper if you're using black pepper. Give it a stir. Now you can see how those golden raisins the white wine, the water, the vinegar, it's all cooked down and it's starting to bubble. It almost looks like liquidy honey or molasses. Can you see that? That's what you really want to look for. You want it to have a little bit of texture to it, something that's going to stick to the chicken. So once your onions are tender and that sauce has got a nice little texture to it, can you see that?
You're gonna add your onions and sauce right to the tomatoes. Ooh, when you do that, so fun. This is why cooking is so fun. Look at that. Tomatoes and the onions meld together. You've got that lovely liquid in the pan. You're ready to add your chicken. Take the chicken out. There's the chicken. Beautiful. So you've got your sauce, onions, tomatoes, all ready to go. Your chicken's out. Pick your thigh. That's the one that takes the longest to cook. Put the thermometer in the center part of the thigh meat and check to make sure it says 165. Perfect. If the thigh is cooked, for sure everything else is. Now the fun part. I mean, the whole thing is fun. Now we're just gonna park our chicken pieces right in that sauce. See how beautiful this looks too? It's not just delicious. Notice how the skin side is up, the flesh side is just getting nestled right in that sauce. Just flavoring both sides of the chicken. You roasted the chicken in this pan, right? Look at all this beautiful natural chicken juice you get. Pour that right in there. Don't waste any bit of flavor. We don't wanna throw away any flavor. We want it all in our food. Once the chicken simmers, shut off the heat. Shake the pan a little, just to loosen everything a little bit. Gather a little bit of that and just spoon that glaze right over the pieces of chicken. Tiny pinch of salt. Always put a tiny pinch of salt on the end of cooking the chicken just to give that little bit of seasoning on the exterior once it's fully cooked. And now we're ready to plate. For this dish, I like to use a plate that's almost too small. I think you'll like the way it looks when the chicken is kind of piled up instead of on a big platter. The other thing about piling your food closely together on a smaller plate is that it'll stay warmer longer. Start by taking a few of the larger pieces of chicken and putting them around the bottom of your serving dish. I like a little drumstick poking out like, hey, spoon a little of that sauce with the onions and the tomatoes on the first pieces of chicken so that every piece is getting a little bit of that glaze and those onions and those tomatoes. And then you wanna continue more chicken, filling in the little gaps that are left from the first layer. I like a little drum and a little wing on top. Do what you want. You're the, you're the artist in your own kitchen. And then you wanna gather every bit, those golden raisin bits, the onions, those melted tomatoes, just cascading over these pieces of chicken. This is making me so hungry. Do you see how nice it looks all piled on this smaller platter? It's really dramatic. By the way, if you get sick of a Thanksgiving ham or a Thanksgiving turkey, make a Thanksgiving chicken. Gather every bit of that sauce. You worked hard for it. Make sure it all goes on the plate. Do that little chefy wipe on any of the edges. And then top with that crispy bacon. Woohoo! I think we're ready to eat. What about you? And now let's make a plate. Just dig in. I'll take a beautiful drumstick. A little 
thigh meat. If you plate this individually, just make sure you get a few of those onions and bits of bacon and tomato on each plate. If I were Jeffrey Zakarian, I would probably put on a tuxedo and use a fork and a knife with a velvet dinner napkin. But I'm Alex Cornicelli, and we're in this together. So I'm gonna eat it right like this. Wow. Mmm. You see how piping hot the chicken still is? Because you plated it all together on the platter. It's perfectly roasted. You get smoky bacon, tomato, a little bit of that onion, and just those other really subtle notes that you put in there yourself. The golden raisins, the brown sugar, that white wine, that red wine vinegar. This is definitely like me, sweet and sour. So you see we've made this beautiful sweet and sour chicken. Thanks for cooking along with me. I'm gonna eat the rest of this now and maybe the whole platter.